very pleasant good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome once again to big stone television today as you know the journey continues with us paying our respect to those great icons those who have gone too soon and those who are still here with us today today one of my favorite fan his name is the royal general ask me to find out what has been happening with Leroy Wallace? Yep, we're talking about Leroy Horsemouth Wallace. The Royal General, your wish is at my command. Leroy Horsemouth Wallace was born on the 22nd of August in 1950. He is a Jamaican drummer who worked for several years at Studio One and has worked with numerous reggae artists including The Gladiators, Inner Circle, Prince Farai, Sound Dimension, Gregory Isaacs, Burning Spear, Ijeman Levi, Bruno Blum, and Pierre Paul Jack. He starred as himself in the lead role of the film Rockers. Wallace attended the Alpha Boys School in the 1960s and early 1970s, where he studied under Lenny Hibbert. Wallace also joined the Scatellites when they reformed in the mid 1970s. Wallace has been credited with inventing the rocker's rhythm. He has also recorded as a DJ on a number of tracks, for example, Herb Vendor produced by Lee Perry and Universal Love, released under the pseudodome of Mad Roy. Coming from the mouth of Horsemouth Wallace are these words, I knew one day when I would reach the drums, it was going to be hell. If we were to create a timeline of important moments in Jamaican music, you might notice a tendency for one Leroy Horsemouth Wallace to be somehow involved. Drummer, actor, pioneering DJ, activist, the skinny Rastaman with the long countenance and expressive eyes has seen and done it all. Remember as a child he attended the fabled Alpha School for Wayward Boys whose music department produced Dan Drummond, Rico Rodriguez, Yellow Man and Leroy Smart, just to name a few. In the late 60s, he scored the hot seat as house drummer at Clement Cox and Dad Introduction Superflow Studio One Records. By the mid 70s, he was beating out pugnacious pattern at Studio One's successor in Island Dominance Channel One, where there is some historical debate concerning whether it was he or Sly Dunbar who created the rocker style that defined the times. Then of course he became famous internationally as the irrepressible charismatic star of Ted Bafaculus featured film Rockers, named after said drumbeat. But let's not forget that he was already a recording artist in his own right and several notable DJ 45, the most celebrated being 1975 Herb Vendor recorded at Lee Scratch Perry, Black Ark. Despite wandering into the crosshairs of history so often, none of these achievements have brought Horsemouth lasting financial reward. When United Reggae met him at Garrison Festival in 2014, he was touring with Cedric Mighton, Z Jackson and the Swiss band The Liberty Vendors while offering his service as a drum teacher. Yet even at age 64, Orsi had lost none of his legendary excess of personality as he shared his fascinating story from his own mouth. The interview that he had with United Reggae was a suggested interview by Arsmod and I'm going to big up United Reggae for these excerpts because you can hardly find anything on the great Leroy Arsmod Wallace. 
How did African folk rhythm influence you as a child? Wallace replied, As a follower of Christ, as a young youth, I used to see the Michelangelo picture of Jesus. So that was what grew us up. Growing up at Alpha, I would always see a little black girl by the water. I saw a lot of pictures at school. Every time I look at a book on Africa, I started to see myself. So when I saw a little kid by the water carrying water in her head as an African, I would always feel homely. So I always knew where I was from. Plus Marcus Garvey and his African teachings got me conscious about myself because in school my friends would call me Shines, Blacker and all these kinds of names. I started with my grandmother as a matter of fact in her church. In those days in the 1950s in Trenchtown, it was like an African apostolic church, African Methodist, African Baptist. They wrapped their head like poco, like Arabs, but a different thing, an African thing. They wrapped their heads and they jump like ha 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 ha, ha 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 ha, drums out rhythm with a stick with a rod. They'd call it their rod. They'd have their missionary, a place like their church. They call it a missionary. My grandmother used to do the poker, and the music like drums out rhythm sings, Oh Jesus Christ, when Jesus come, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. I developed from my grandmother's pokomania because around me live pokomania and Jankunu. This is all African. Jankunu is like what you call it in England. When you dressed up and put on a mask on a Wednesday or whatever, Jankunu is like that. They'd come out every Christmas time with horse head and they'd had a different beat from the pokomania drum. But, I had, but I'd have to have a drum to show you the difference, but they're all from Africa. Then you add the Rastaman with his Naya Bingi drum, and then you add the Kumina. So you add all those involvements around you growing up as a kid. That is why I got this African in me to play the African drum. How you find yourself in Alpha School? Horsemouth replied, Well, my mom was very poor. She couldn't afford to look after me, and plus, I was a very troublesome kid at seven. I stole some money from her. She used to send me to Greenwich Farm School, and she used to give me truppence, which was three penny, just a little copper thing that could do me for the whole day. But I kept on taking some truppence that she put behind a windowsill, and a little did I know as a kid that if I kept taking them, it would all finish little by little. But that wasn't bad. After that, I went to the shop and took trust in her name. On a Friday, she'd sell fish. She'd push up her cart and shout, fish, and she'd work very hard. She'd have all her money in this bib. She'd keep around her and she'd come home to pay the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper said, Miss Essie, you owe me quatty. Quatty is a penny and a half penny, she said. What? I didn't know that. And he said, yeah, your son take it, man. So she came home and told me to light the fire. I lit the fire to make up her dinner. And she grabbed me and tied up my hands. And she gave me a good whipping, you know. But the worst thing she did was she dipped my hand in the fire and it got burned. I went under the bottom of the house. In those days, you had a house on some boards. A small person could go under, but a big person couldn't. I slept there for the night. She wanted me to come out. In the morning, she pushed her cart to go to work, so I came out. Now the neighbors and her didn't get on too good, so the neighbors called the police and I ended up in Alpha. Did you study under Lenny Ebert? Wallace replied, you know, yes, Lenny Ebert was my first band master. There was a man before Lenny Ebert, but he was the one I went through. He was a good xylophone player and a good drummer too. That's where I started to play professionally. But I started with my grandma playing the drum. I was very professional playing the Pokemania drum. 
But when I went to Alpha, it gave me more impetus in the professional thing. Holding good drums, different drums from my grandmother's things she used to have. So I got a different and I started to learn music. Cratchit, Menin, Semibrief and Quaver. How much competition was there to get on the drums? They must have had limited resources. Wallace replied, yeah. Well, I started on the wall, you know. I got two drumsticks and I started to roll on the wall. I started to make a roll because I knew one day when I would reach a drum, it was going to be hell. And furthermore, I used to play on tin pans. You had some big oil drums I would play on. Some very big, large oil drums. Boom, boom, boom. Before I used to go to the band, I used to make noise to get on the band. I used to play some African beats with me and my friends. That was how the sister said, you better go in the band. Yeah, I got the rhythm inside of me so much. How did you leave Alpha? Wallace replied, Alpha? I left there by 64 because the sister ran me away. There was this telephone at the school so I could call anywhere all around the world. The telephone was very cheap in those days. The telephone was there and nobody was using it. So my friend, he decided to call the front desk where the sister is. I don't know why he did that. He said, hello sister, how are you? And then he told sister a big bad word. So I called sister and apologized. I'm sorry for this guy here. And the same guy told sister it was me. She heard my voice and she couldn't know which of them so she sent me out of the school. But by 1964, I'd already learned almost everything. I was like a master of things. You'd learn printing? Wallace replied, I learned printing, tile making, music. I never get a chance to do the tile making, but I work at the government printing office. I could print you a passport in those days, laugh. Yeah, it was very nice. And it was through your printing skills that you entered recording studio? Wallace replied, I went to Mr. Dad to print labels. I went to print labels at West Indies Records Limited. At one time it was called Dynamics, and it's called Dynamics Sounds now. But in those days, our past Prime Minister, which is Mr. Edward Siaga, I saw him there and he was an engineer. He was no prime minister, he was an engineer. At that time they had two studios, one four track and one eight track studio, one in the bottom and one in the middle. Siaga was at the one in the middle. How did you go from printing to drumming at Studio One? Wallace replied, I went to Studio One to do a little job as a printer. Because at the time I went there, there was Phil Kalinda playing drums. I went there around 68, 69. I used to play in a band called the Mighty Vikings. I used to play on the street. Mighty Vikings, Byron Lees, those big bands. So I was very famous in Kingston as a drummer, even before I went to the studio. As a matter of fact, how I got to play at Coxon Studio was one day the drummer Phil didn't turn up. When I was there printing labels, and in those days when you played the drums, nobody could see you. Only you could see them. You could just sneak into the liquor room and get inside and close the door, count and start to play. So if you play good, they don't know and they think it is the drummer come. I played five songs and they decided they finish. I didn't want to come out so I sat there waiting for them to go out so that the place was empty and I could sneak out but they didn't move at all. They just went, hey Phil, Phil and when they look there was no Phil. It was awesome out the printer playing. Coxon, he came home at 6 o'clock every evening so he could inspect and listen to everything that you played. He called everybody Jackson so he said Jackson. Looks like you have to stay upon the drum and leave out the printing business. You played with Dennis Brown in the band Falcons. Wallace replied, I also carried Dennis Brown on those vocals, like saying, God bless the children. On Dennis Brown's first album, I sang in Brentford All Star. 
that was Larry Marshall, me, the Eptones, Jennifer Lara, anybody that could sing could be up there. So as long as you sang at Coxon, you could be in Brentford All Star. They'd call you for harmony anytime. But Coxon, he didn't tell you who was in Brentford All Stars. He had so many different names for the band. He had underground vegetables, sound dimension. He had so much different names. Ladies and gentlemen, there and part one of this very intriguing interview that United Reggae did with Leroy Horsemount Wallace. I will continue part two at a later date. So there you have it, the Royal General, part one to a very interesting story that United Reggae, an interview that was done with Leroy Horsemouth Wallace. So the Royal General, your wish is halfway true. Stay tuned for part two. You'll find out how he played at the studio and how long did Horsemouth Wallace stay at the studio. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Please like and share this video. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, now is the time for you to do so.